and welcome to Adventure Light. My name is Tom and in this video I'm going to be reviewing this tent here, the Asta Gear Feng Ying 2 or the Asta Gear Wind Whisper 2 or as everybody on the online forums likes to call it, the Asta Mid because it bears a lot of similarities to the Mountain Laurel Designs Duo Mid. So I got this tent for about £40 on AliExpress. Um, I went for it because uh, it was nice and big. It's about um, 160, no, 170 centimetres across. Um, and then across the front, uh, so from head to foot, it's uh, 265 centimetres. So it's big enough for uh, two people to sleep in. In fact, you can buy either a one-person inner or a two-person inner with these tents, but I'll, I'll talk about those uh, inner tents in a moment. Um, the height of the tent um, is all down to how high you want to put the pole. Um, I've set my pole to 135 centimeters, which is as high as a pacer pole will go. And that gives it quite a low pitch. So the edges are quite close to the ground. Good if it's windy, not so good if um, it's really calm because you will get a lot of condensation. Um, if you want to raise it up a bit, you probably could uh, put it to 140 centimeters and that would lift the edges up a bit and you'd get a little less condensation. Um, most trekking poles, the maximum height they will go to is about 135, but the first trekking pole that I used with this tent only went to 130, so I had to get a rock and wedge it underneath just to lift it up a little bit. So if you're gonna buy this tent, make sure your uh, trekking poles are long enough. The tent came uh, in a stuff sack, which, um, was plenty big enough. I didn't have any trouble getting uh, the tent in here. Um, so that's a bonus. It also came with, um, I think 12 uh, V-shaped shiny blue uh, tent pegs, which are very attractive looking. Um, but I've swapped them out for um, some Eastern Nano pegs because you need the nice long pegs in the peat district to get into the peat and the moss and stuff like that. Um, it also came with a full set of guy lines for uh, the front the back and the sides. You can see the guy out points here. Um, and it also came with a tube of silicon sealant and a little brush uh, so you could um, seal all the seams yourself. It is a sil nylon tent. I believe it's 20 denier. So as with all sil nylon tents, you will need to uh, self seal it yourself. The advertised weight was 454 grams. Um, when I weighed it on the scales, it came out at 470 grams. Now I think the discrepancy might be is that they took all the cords off the tent before they weighed it. I didn't take all the cords that came with the tent, which are the ones um, that attach to the line locks on the guy out points. Um, so maybe that's what the difference is. Um, all in, so if you include the pegs, the um, guy out ropes, um, the tent and the bag, I think it came to just over 600 grams, so 615 grams. So I did own the uh, one person inner for this tent, um, but it wasn't very good. Um, I think it, it had holes in the mesh, which may have um, I may have done myself, or it may have happened in transit, or it may have just been poor quality control. But I remember I camped out one night in the Peak District and the midges were just getting in and I got eaten alive, even inside the bug mesh. So that was the last time I used it, I scrapped it and I replaced it um, with a 3FUL single person inner tent, um, which is a lot better and I will be reviewing um, in another video. This is my second Asta mid tent. Um, the first one I bought in a gray color, which is a lot more stealthy. Um, the second time around, I thought I'd go for red uh, just because it's a bit brighter. It looks, shows up in photos a bit better. Um, the first one came to a sticky end um, when I was drying it in the garden after a camping trip and uh, it got into a fight with the next door neighbor's cat. Um, so hence why I had to get a second one. That's about as much as I can probably tell you while sat here. Um, I'm gonna give you the tour of the tent and then you can get an idea of some of the features, some of the pros, some of the cons, some of the minor changes that you might need to make before it works just right for you.
So this is the view of the tent from the outside. Um, you can see it's uh, a nice tight pitch um, and uh, with a bit of practice you can get this uh, pretty much nailed on every single time. Um, you'll notice that the sides of the tent are curved. So you've got a nice curve going from the peak all the way down to the peg out points and that's called a catenary cut and um, what that means is that it spreads the strain across the whole length of the fabric as opposed to just the top and the bottom and it's also very good at shedding wind so it's a very very strong shape and uh, if you're looking for a, uh, a budget catenary cut tent then this probably is something worth considering uh, so let's have a look at the door it's got a two-way zip so you can zip from the top or you can zip from the bottom and there's a clip at the bottom there which is really useful because uh, that's just going to take the strain off the zip as well a little bit. Um, this zip here does look a little bit flimsy and I suspect if you're not careful it could be one of the first things to go so you want to make sure you're always using that clip and just making sure you're not putting too much strain on that door when you're pegging it out. There is a, uh, a flap here um, which is held sort of fairly inadequately by some velcro tabs and that's to keep the rain out of the zip. Um, most of the time you'll be wanting to pitch that end into the wind um, because this is the door that closes. This side you can open up um, and keep this side closed so you want to make sure that that end is uh, facing into the wind um, hence why the, the uh, flap is facing this way. So if we go to the top uh, you can see that there's a little loop here so you could potentially hang um, the tent off a tree or something. Come down, you've got ventilation loops at the front and the back. That keeps this bit open here so you can see the ventilation in there. Um, and there's a little loop there. Now originally this loop was attached to this guy out point and that was purely just to keep this open. Now what I've done is I've, I've turned this into a fairly loose guy out point. So I've detached it from um, this guy out point and I've turned it to its own independent guy out point. Um, I've just used a, a midshipman's knot here and a, a clove hitch at the top just to make a very simple guy line um, and then this uh, door um, guy out point is independent and just loops over the top um, so if you want the door open uh, you can just unloop it and roll it up. Uh, same here, uh, this peg out point here is for this side of the door so if you want to roll it up you can just unhoop it and uh, roll it up and get it out of the way. When the tents came um, the uh, peg out points had a loop on each end of the cord which is really confusing because you only really want to make sure that you're getting the bottom cord because if you pick the top cord by mistake it will slip so I had to go around take all the loops out and uh, just put a knot in so I'd recommend you do that on a windy night you don't want to be messing around trying to work out which end you want you want to just be able to grab it and peg it so if I was you I would go round and just undo all the loops and make sure you put a nice knot in the uh, top and leave the loop in the bottom I also made this loop a lot bigger so I could just hook it over the guy out point um, for when I want to open and close that door uh, so uh, you've got your tie out points along each edge uh, you've got your peg out points on each corner, in between each corner, guy out points on each side and at the back and again I've done the same arrangement at the back where I've uh, separated these two guy out points to make them independent guy out points. Um, on these back corners um, I tend to loop the inner tent um, over the line locks so in order to do that what I do is I just unhoop uh, the cord loop the guy out rope around it and then uh, if I see if I can do this one-handed probably not uh, hang on just gonna put this down for a moment uh, there you go um, so then I loop that back round and that means that the inner tent is perfectly in the middle if I'm uh, using the elastic bungees to clip onto these um, line locks, it means it's 
dead center, it means I'm gonna get a really good tight inner tent. Um, so that's why I've done that. Made the uh, loops a little bit bigger so I can just flick them over the, the tent pegs. Uh, so that's about it. I have found one uh, sort of thing which isn't quite right with this tent. If you look along this seam here, you can see where they've pinched the fabric here and here. So there is a permanent crease in that corner. It doesn't matter how I pitch it, it's always gonna have that crease because they've misaligned the fabric slightly. Now, um, you know, obviously that's that's poor quality control. If it was a, a company like Mountain Laurel Designs, this tent would have never have left the factory. Um, but you're paying 40 quid, uh, you get what you pay for. And I don't, Think it significantly affected the performance of the tent yet. Um, we'll we'll have to wait and see. When it comes to uh, pitching this tent, there's a few little tips that I think it's worth knowing. Um, the first is when you decide on the orientation, which way you want it to be facing with the wind. I would always go for having uh, the right hand side as you're sat in the tent looking outwards, facing the wind, um, because the right hand side door is the one that can remain shut whilst you've got the left hand side open. Also, um, it's the narrowest side of the tent. Um, you don't want the back of the tent facing the wind because obviously that's the largest side and it's gonna obviously get pushed quite a lot. So you want the narrow side on the right hand side facing into the wind. When you're pegging it out, uh, the first two pegs are pretty straightforward. Just make sure that you've uh, um, got good peg out points. The third peg, you need to make sure that you're getting a really nice right angle between the first, second and third peg. And then when you put the fourth peg in, obviously you should get a nice rectangular shape. If you get that slightly off, it will completely throw out the tent. Um, you need to make sure you get a really good rectangular um, peg out at, before you put the pole in. Um, like I said, you can either have a high pitch, which is where you have the pole set at 140. Um, most poles will only go to 135 so you'll need a pole jack which is like a little tube that you can stick on the top of your pole um, and that will just lift it up a little bit higher if it's calm and you want to make sure that you're reducing uh, chances of condensation. Um, if you're looking for a, a lower pitch you can set it at 135 and uh, that will bring it a lot lower down and it will be better if it's in windy conditions. So there's a few very minor modifications that I would make to this tent. Um, the first one I would do is I'd uh, put a little carabiner in the top um, just to make hanging the inner tent a little bit easier. I would change the uh, arrangement of the guy out points. The guy out point between uh, the ventilation hoop and the front and back guy out points I don't think is, is necessary. I'd much rather have uh, the hoop as an independent guy out point. Um, so I would do that. That might be something you're interested in doing. Again, go round, make sure that on the corners and all the guy out points that you've got the loop on the bottom and a knot on the top coming out of the line locks. You don't want to get be getting confused when it's dark or windy. You want to be able to just pick the correct loop and uh, put your peg in there. Um, I would replace the uh, pegs um, with longer pegs, uh, Eastern Nanos, Again, like I said, are really good and worth using. Might make some of the loops slightly bigger on um, the uh, guy out points for the front door so that you can loop them off the peg nice and easily and just roll that door up uh, when you need to. Otherwise, this tent really doesn't require a great deal of modifications. It's, it's uh, pretty good out of the bag. I would give it a score of eight out of 10. So I'd say it's better than the uh, trail star copy that I bought um, off AliExpress um, but time will tell I've not used it in any really really foul weather yet um, so if I face any problems with it in the future I will update you on uh, this YouTube channel <laughs>